Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. I've been seeing more and more people that are converting from Christianity to Catholicism and this is becoming a real topic. I've listened to some of these people and they are truly misrepresenting scripture. So today I want to show you a couple of these people and explain some important things about what the Catholic Church believes and why it's not biblical. The first person I want to address is Keith Nestor, who used to be a Protestant pastor and left Christianity to become a Catholic. I stumbled onto his video and watched it, and another one as well, and found a couple of common errors in his Catholic theology I wanted to address. Now this isn't to attack him or the Catholic Church, but to hopefully bring clarity to anyone who's had questions about these things. He's trying to defend some of the comments people have made on his videos. So the first thing he says at about the five minute mark is one of the most common mistranslations that the Catholic Church uses and that's Matthew 16 where Jesus said and I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Catholics believe that this means Jesus was saying that Peter was the foundation of what the church would be built on. The Catholic Church that is. But not only that, that Peter was the first pope, and this is why the pope has an upside down cross on one of his seats. It's not a satanic cross, it's symbolizing how Peter was killed. Peter didn't feel worthy to die the same way Jesus did, so he was crucified upside down. But if we can show that Peter wasn't the first pope, then all his successors as popes were not popes either. There is no pope. Now, to his credit, he does say a lot of good and true things and makes a good point about Scripture being the foundation of the church. And later on, we'll look at just why that very statement refutes many of the things the Catholic Church teaches. But the biggest error is saying that Peter is the rock Jesus was going to build the church on. If we look at the Greek, the name Peter, Petros, means rock or rock man. In the next phrase, Christ used Petra upon this rock, which is a feminine form of rock, not just a name. Now, Christ used a play on words. He does not say upon you, Peter, or upon your successors, but upon this rock, upon this divine revelation and profession of faith in Christ, upon this understanding that I am the Christ, upon that truth, I will build my church. It's really that simple. You don't have to be a Greek scholar to understand this. But this is the start of the line of popes, yet it never really existed. So the so-called successor of Peter didn't really happen either. Please, if you are Catholic and watching this, just look at what the Bible says and see that this is true. Now, he makes another strange statement that in John 21, 15, this is where Jesus gave Peter control over all the other apostles, and it's always been that way. But to translate that to mean Jesus gave Peter authority over all the apostles is just twisting scripture to the max. At about the 18 minute mark, he makes a bold and incorrect statement saying that if it wasn't for the Catholic Church, we wouldn't even have a Bible. Say what? But he goes on to say how people have said that the Catholic Church has been going to great lengths to make sure people couldn't or wouldn't read the Bible and that that's just wrong. But it's actually very correct. Even where I live, I do ask my Catholic friends if they read their Bible, and they say no because the priests tell them that only the Pope and the priests can understand it, so they should just listen. This is from the people I live around every day. It's no wonder why so many are deceived. Now, in the early days, the church did actually discourage people from reading the Bible on their own, and this intensified throughout the Middle Ages, and later on, they even added prohibition forbidding translation of the Bible into other languages. The Council of Trent in 1545 to 1564 placed the Bible on its list of prohibited books and forbade any person to read the Bible without a license from the Catholic bishop or inquisitor. The council added these words, So if anyone shall dare to read or keep in his possession that book without such a license, he shall not receive absolution till he has given it up to his ordinary. 
Pope Leo XII called the Protestant Bible the gospel of the devil in an encyclical letter of 1824. In January 1850, he condemned the Bible societies and admitted the fact that the distribution of Scripture has long been condemned by the Holy Chair. People like William Tyndale were burned at the stake for translating the Bible into English. The following is a quote from David Cloud who wrote the book, The KJV and the Latin Vulgate. Let me ask you, my Catholic friends, why do you think Rome prohibited Catholics and others from reading the Bible? Why do you think they killed over 50 million people and called them heretics for reading and believing the Holy Scriptures? Why did Pope Pius VII say that the Bible causes men more harm than benefit? Why would God's word cause harm? The devil and these fake religious leaders know that if you read the Bible with the intention of learning truth, you will leave the false for what is true. How true is that? I saw another video he did titled, Is Francis Chan Becoming Catholic? And he tells us about an article he read on Reformation Charlotte. But the strangest thing I heard him say is that the Eucharist is the center of Christian worship and that we've replaced it with focus on a person teaching. We've removed the focus from being about the Eucharist, which, which according to Francis Chan, which again, he's just saying the truth, that, that that was the center of Christian worship. Hey, guess what? Newsflash, it still is in Catholicism. Am I misunderstanding something there? That just sounded weird to me. Anyhow, I then saw in my sidebar a title from Lizzie's Answers on 10 heresies I believed as a Protestant, and I had to check it out. So I'll just list a few of the things she says helped her become a Catholic, so-called heresies that Protestants teach. She mentioned that the Catholics' focus is to bring heaven to earth. Sound familiar? Maybe they're friends. That Mary was actually a perpetual virgin and Jesus didn't have any brothers. She said God had a mother. She said we're not saved by faith alone and she goes on about works. She says that images and statues are important and that sola scriptura is not good and we need other opinions. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up and I will leave a link to these videos below. But I really am surprised to see so many other videos of people that are changing from Christianity to Catholicism. I just want to list a few more things that are important to understand and hopefully you can share with any Catholic friends or Christian friends you may have. The first is that the Catholic doctrine of justification is not by grace alone through faith alone. The Catholic Church teaches that being justified or being declared righteous is a process that begins at the moment of baptism and then progresses and is maintained by a person's participation in the seven sacraments, or basically by works. They don't deny grace, they just add works. Now, I want to read a couple of things that are important from the Council of Trent. You may have heard of the Council of Trent, but don't know exactly what it is. Well, it was the formal response to the doctrinal challenges of the Protestant Reformation held between 1545 and 1563 and included 17 dogmatic decrees covering the aspects of the Catholic religion. In Canon 32, it says, If anyone saith that the good works of one that is justified are in such manner the gifts of God, as that they are not also the good merits of him that is justified, or that the said justified by the good works which he performs through the grace of God and the merit of Jesus Christ, whose living member he is, does not truly merit increase of grace, eternal life, and the attainment of that eternal life, and also an increase of glory, let him be anathema. In other words, if you are not saying that works add to your salvation and help maintain it and assure it, you are cursed. And Canon 24 says, If anyone saith that the justice received is not preserved and also increased before God through good works, but that the said works are merely the fruits and signs of justification obtained, but not a cause of the increase thereof, let him be anathema. So this is saying that if we say works are the fruit of salvation and not part of the cause, we are also cursed. So the basic statement is this, justification is a process that starts at baptism, but you're not totally saved yet. There's all these sacraments you have to do, that is, good works to be really saved. Not like the Christian belief that when you are saved, you are saved. 
with this, you have to keep working at it and you're never really sure of it. You always feel uncertain. So with Catholic theology, you can have faith in Jesus, but not be good enough to be saved. Salvation is also a temporary thing that can be lost just in a moment when you commit something called a mortal sin. You lose all the grace Jesus has given you when you commit this sin. It's gone. To make it even more confusing, there isn't an actual list of what mortal sins are. Some are obvious like murder, but they don't have an actual list. So once again, you never really know if you're secure or not. But they do have what they call the sin of presumption, which is the presumption that in 10 years you're still going to be saved. So assurance of salvation to a Catholic is arrogant. Why? Well, if you're basing your salvation, or at least part of it, on your good works, then yes, that would be arrogant to assume you're going to be saved and good the rest of your life. But if you're basing it on the finished work of Jesus on the cross, then it's not arrogant, it's just faith. The Council of Trent also says that salvation is given as a reward promised by God himself to be faithfully given to their good works and merits. And merits is another way of saying what you earned something you deserve to get. Yes, we earn rewards, but not salvation. Pope Bonifacio VIII said in November of 1302, we declare, we state, we define that it is absolutely necessary for the salvation of every human creature that they be subject to the Roman pontiff. And from that statement came the Catholic doctrine of extra ecclesium nulla solis, that outside the Catholic Church there is no salvation. The Catholic Catechism says that all necessary truth is found in the scriptures. This is a big problem because there is no Pope in the Bible, never mind saying that we have to be subject to him. And the last thing I want to bring up is the idea that the Eucharist actually turns into the blood of Christ and is his flesh. This is called transubstantiation. They read this as being literal, but it was obviously figurative language. When Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches, did it mean he was actually a vine and we are actually branches? When he said to the disciples, you are the salt of the earth, did they turn into salt? And when Jesus said, this is my blood, was he actually holding a cup of his own blood? Did he already die? Were there two Jesus? No, it was figurative speech. There are so many other things we could go through, but these are just a few. We truly are in the last days as things fall apart before Christ's return. Pray for Francis Chan and all who are deceived and involved with the ecumenical movement. And don't be afraid to stand tall and preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ. That's it for today. So if you did find this information helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring the bell to get all the future notifications. But until next time, take care and God bless.